So in yesterday's video, we reported on Dylan Dennis claiming that he was out of the boxing match with Logan Paul and Mike Perry claiming he was officially in. It's official guys. I'm in. It looks like Dylan versus Logan is actually still on. Hours after Dylan said he was out, he tweeted this. He wrote, sheesh, you all take everything so seriously. He followed up with, see you October 14th, boy. Logan Paul responded to all this. He tweeted, don't let Dylan fool you. He knows that pulling out again would guarantee no fighter, fight organization, or legit brand will ever work with him because he's an unreliable liar. Not to mention the embarrassment of f***ing out against me. I'm going to break this predator physically, mentally, spiritually, and financially. This isn't about just winning the fight. I'm going to destroy his entire life. But truthfully, I don't give a f who shows up on October 14th. The man across from me will be knocked out cold. Earlier today, Dylan tweeted this. He wrote, can someone drug test me? This is bull****. So do you guys think Dylan is going to show up? Or do you think we're going to get to see Mike Perry box Logan Paul? Post your predictions in the comments. Dana White explains his process in booking Sean Strickland's first title defense. Dana also discusses Bellator potentially being sold and whether or not he's concerned with the situation. It's been a, about almost a month uh, since Sean Strickland beat Israel Asanya. Um, now that you've had a month to kind of think about it, is the plan for, for Sean to rematch Israel? Or are you kind of waiting to see what the result is of, of Paulo Costa versus Hamdat Shemaev? Like, are you kind of just seeing how that fight goes or do you kind of have a plan? Yeah, I mean, that, that fight just happened. And, uh, you know, a, a couple of fights are going to play out here now over the next month or so. And, uh, and, and then we'll go from there and figure out what's next. Whatever, whatever the best fight to make um, when all is said and done and, and who's injured, who's not injured, who can go, what time, where, you know, there's a lot of different factors that play into what we're going to do next. Are you monitoring the situation with them at all? And do you care? Because I know in the past you said like, hey, we need these organizations out there. And there seems to be a fear that maybe it could just completely go away. Are, are you monitoring that at all? And do you have any concern over what happens? Literally not at all. I mean, uh, obviously, if Bellator... If Bellator continues to exist, it's, it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. Um, you know, if you look at all the shit that we take about a lot of things, they're owned by fucking Viacom. You know how much money these guys have? Why would they be going out of business unless they're just tired of doing it? Because you're hearing rumors about Showtime, too, not just Bellator. So, you know, um, you know what I think of, of, of Showtime as a company. It's, there's no secret, you know. Um, again, I could go on for days about the production on Saturday. They tried to do it better. I noticed Showtime, I noticed you tried to do it better, but you guys suck. <laughs> Ahead of his fight against Grant Dawson this weekend, Bobby Green says he wants to fight Max Holloway next. Who would you like to coach against on The Ultimate Fighter if you get your wish granted? Hmm. Hmm. Who's got spunk? Who's got flair? Who's got... Like, I would say Patty, but because he's like, he thinks he's kind of cool, you know? He's a weirdo, but let me see. Who else got some spunk? Drew is too nice. Drew is too nice, and, and I'd like to fight him again, but he's such a nice guy. You can't fucking hate that guy at all. He's, I wouldn't even know. Let them pick. By the way, I'd sign up to watch you and Poirier on top. Oh, that's dope. That's dope. That's dope. Poirier got spunk. Yeah, he got it. He got it. I'll give it to him. I feel like Holloway as well. You both take pride in your boxing. And then, hey, he's got the record for the most amount of hits in his division. I got the record in my division. That'd be a sick fight. Holloway's dope. I got nothing but respect for those type of guys like that. That'd be sick. And then we won't both talk to each other. We're going to talk too and beat each other up. That's a great fight. Michael Chandler disagrees with those who are saying he's wasting his time by waiting around for a fight with Conor McGregor. Chandler said, I get people calling me delusional. Why are you waiting? You're wasting all these years. I believe we get lazy or we get busy. And at 37 years old, I feel a lot better than a lot of 27 years old. Taking good care of my body and taking good care of my mind, even with the wear and tear that I've put on my body, I'm not worried about the getting old thing. I feel phenomenal and I have a lot of tread left on these tires. If anything, I needed a little bit of rest. So a little bit of time off isn't a bad thing. I'm building things outside of fighting and people will be able to see the fruits of my labor when the time comes. Leading into Leon Edwards versus Colby Covington at UFC 296, Leon is a minus 125 favorite and Colby is a plus 105 underdog. 
Robert Whitaker says Leon should be the favorite. On the MM Arcade podcast, Rob also explains why he thinks Bilal Muhammad should fight the winner. However, since Colby and Leon may have injuries after the fight, Rob suggests that Bilal fight Kamaru Usman in the meantime unless Usman moves up to middleweight. Leon's a champ. He's going to be earning pay-per-view regardless. I yeah. think he did so well against Usman um, last fight that I, I, you know, I would I would put him as a favorite moving into his, his next fight with Colby. Mm. Understandably, Colby has an extra lung. Like he he is yeah. an absolute terror in there. But still, I think it's a good fight. It makes sense. Plus, let's let's be honest. Let's take let's take logic out of there and just make make a fight the fans want to see they the fans want to see that fight they want to see True. colby not fight usman and fight for a title you know yeah and yeah they, yeah that's that's this fight i do feel though Bilal's last fight definitely gets him in the talks and in the position that he needs to be in mm. to make that next fight I, I i would have to say Bilal is is next in line Firstly, I think Usman's calling out just about anyone. I mean, true. <laughs> right yeah, yeah. Now. Like Don't he's, blame he's him. He's calling a lot of yeah. people out. <laughs> but like, there was even a rumor that he's going to go up to middleweight, you know? And uh, wouldn't that be interesting? Because have you seen photos of him? He's looking huge right now. Colby and, and Leon, they're going to fight and they're going to have to have time off afterwards. It's a long time out of the gate for Bilal. If that's the sort of fighter he is, he wants to get in there quickly because I think yeah. he fought... He fought uh, Burns when? Probably two months ago, mm -hmm. I want to say. Mm -hmm. Something like that. that. That's not even that long. If he gets guaranteed, may maybe though, he's not getting guaranteed a, fight, a title shot. He's not getting guaranteed that next contention slot, which means, what's he doing? He's just sitting. Just sitting there. You know, yeah, sitting on his hands. So it appears Hamza Chamayev has been DMing Paulo Costa's girlfriend, Tamara. Paulo posted this to his Twitter. He wrote, I'm going to report this harassment by Gourmet Chen Chen towards my girlfriend slash future mother of my children's and manager. I felt threatened by this handsome guy calling her on DM. Please, Tamara, don't be fooled by that beautiful face. Here's the DMs. It says, how can you be together with this shit? He like black boys with two photos of what Isra Adesanya did to Paulo after their fight. Tamara replied to Paulo's tweet. She wrote, this guy is so scared. So he's trying to affect you through a woman. But I think he don't know that I'm on this game for a long time. And this type of thing just shows his weakness. Don't be scared, Chen Chen. Paula replied, holy sh LOL. I love you so much. He's still a newbie to the game. Goof boy. And that's going to wrap it up for the news. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe to Full Mount MMA and click the bell icon to be notified when we post future ones. Here are the three top comments from last video. These comments are in reference to Dylan Dennis claiming that he was pulling out of the fight with Logan just to say that he was trolling a couple hours later. The first one says, letting Perry get locked in a ring with Logan is the biggest revenge against Logan that Dylan can do. The second one's from the Devil's Advocate. It says, big brain move by Dylan. Can't get sued if Logan is dead. And the final one says, I hope Dylan pulls out. Logan will be mentally destroyed by Dylan. Then he would be physically destroyed by Perry. Those were the three top comments from last video. If you want to be featured on the next one, all you have to do is comment down below. If you missed yesterday's news, click the video on screen to get caught up. And make sure to go subscribe to our second channel where we post our exclusive MMA interviews.